Guns and Tactics 2018 SHOT Show coverage is brought to you by CMC Barrels and V7 Weapon Systems. Hey guys, Steve Colston here with Guns and Tactics. We're at SHOT Show 2018, and one of the booths we always have to stop by is Battle Arms Development because they're always bringing stuff to the table. Here I'm talking with Japheth. Japheth, how you doing, buddy? Good. Good. Doing great. So, had a chance to see these guys at the industry day, had a chance to shoot a few things, uh, and get a little hands-on time with some of the stuff you're going to see here. But if I don't want to spoil that, I'll let Japheth talk about it. All right. So, uh, the big one we've got on the table right now is our Generation 2 OIP. Uh, originally, when we started working with the Matt Babb at Bentwood Gunsmithing on these, we had them down to 3.92 pounds without an optic. This one we have at 3.8 pounds with an optic. Uh, some of the magic there was we actually uh, changed the barrel profile on it a little bit. This one's using a modified version of the Faxon Gunner. We had them turn it down a little bit further. So it's really, really lightweight. And this one's using their minimalist <laughs> trademark, their minimal muzzle brake. And uh, all that combined with our specialized buffer in the back and a titanium carrier allows us to shoot full power 5.56 loads, 55 grain, 62, up, even up to the 77 grain. And uh, it feels like a 1022. Um, you can. You could probably attest better because you actually it got does, to shoot it. It does, yeah. I had actually had the opportunity to shoot both the first generation and the second generation um, of, these, of these firearms. You would think that you're going to get a lot of real felt recoil with the, the weight of these firearms. I mean, you really don't. It, it, it's there, but I mean, it's really, really manageable. It's like shooting a 1022, like you said. It's not anything to be scared of, and it will actually kind of blow your mind with uh, the weight of this rifle. You know? It's, it's pretty good, good stuff there. Some of the things that we've added to it, um, this one's also going to feature our uh, two-stage okay. adjustable trigger. So this one's actually adjustable from two and a half up to five pounds. Uh, we got our ambidextrous lightweight safety selector. It's got a titanium carrier, obviously carbon fiber handguard. Um, this one's running a Trigicon MRO with our, of course, our bad light optics mount. And uh, what we're looking to probably do is a... Uh, a limited run annually on these. Uh, it's going to be between 50 to 100 um, every year, depending on who wants them. Uh, MSRP target that we're shooting for is between 27 and 28.50, and that's actually going to come with an optic. We're not sure if it's going to come with an MRO or uh, something uh, equivalent. We are working on a couple of different versions of our light optics mount. So we, you could get a rifle set up like this. You said 27.50. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Moving forward, this is something that we've also been working on now for uh, the better part of four years. So we've got pat we've had patents pending on it, but this is the first time we've actually been able to produce our own new charging handle. And that's one of those things where in the AR-15, what 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 can you do? What can you really change? What can you make different about a charging handle? It you know it draws the bolt back and and you charge it. So this might just look like something with uh, a larger head, but what's cool? It's not only ambidextrous, it does not rotate the claw out. The claw actually cams outward straight no matter where you pull from. So you can do it two-handed, one-handed, right or left. And the heads themselves are actually going to be interchangeable. It's going to be a modular head design. Okay. So you don't have any roll pins to worry about. And what that does is that completely eliminates any shear force being directed on a rotating claw it keeps that stress off of the upper receiver and also keeps the stress off of the charging handle itself. It distributes all of that across the entire head. What's nice about this uh, this one in particular, now you've seen some other charging handles out there, they're, they're similar in size. Uh, this one is size, you, know, you can get around a large objective lens or uh, objective belt for uh, you know scopes, um, but with uh, with the modular nature of it, uh, we're going to have you know kind of a medium size, something that's a little bit smaller, so it's not going to catch. Uh, one of the other things that kind of looking at is um, definitely you know people who might be disabled, uh, handicap market people you know charging it with uh, charging with one hand or someone who has sure, to charge sure. it you know like against a sling or something. So uh, that's what it's really good for because instead of it slipping off, it'll actually catch, charge, and then come off. Okay, okay. keeping it all together. And, and this just came off the press, right? That I mean, literally just came off the press. That's still in the raw, um, unfinished, just not even tumbled. So. While it's still like this, when do we think that we're going to have this available for general? Um, our target to have those available is uh, end of spring, summertime this year. Okay. And MSRP on that, we're, we're shooting below 100. Oh, okay. Okay. 
Trickle. And what do we have here? And last but not least, and this is something that we've... When we started working on our nine millimeter buffer for, um, we started working on our nine millimeter buffer for our vert system. We didn't have a dedicated receiver ourselves, so we had to convert our own lures with uh, with a conversion block, and those were using Colt magazines. And you actually got to shoot. I did one of our uh, one of our converted uh, one of our converted nine mils with the buffer on it in full auto, yeah. um, and it works very well. But uh, but one of the things we wanted to do is we wanted to come to the market with our own dedicated lower receiver. So this one's also just fresh, hot off the press. Uh, yesterday it was it was finished being machined uh, for the first time. We finally got the program finished for this one receiver. Uh, it weighs 7.8, yeah, 7.8 ounces. Uh, granted, it's still technically in an unfinished state, but it's going to hit right around that 8 ounce mark. So it's really, really light, and it's going to use everybody's favorite, of course, the. Glock style magazines. So we're going to come up with a nine and with a few modifications just to the program. We'll also have it for, of course, uh, probably 40, uh, 40, which uses the same magazines as nine, but also 45 and 10 mil as well. That's outstanding. And so, again, this is right off the press, but when do you expect something like this to be? Available? Something like this, um, we're probably going to be looking towards December, uh, just based on uh, just our current limitations as far as manufacturing is concerned. Uh, but we'd really like to have these more closer to uh, end of summer, fall. Okay. okay, that's outstanding. So if folks want to know more about Battle Arms Development, where would they, where would they go? So of course, if you want to know more about Battle Arms Development, we got Battle Arms TV on YouTube. There's always our Facebook and Instagram and our website, battlearmsdevelopment.com. That's outstanding. Thank you so much for having us. Always Absolutely. a pleasure coming by this booth. Guys, thanks for watching Guns and Tactics for SHOT Show 2018 coverage. If you want to know more, check out GunsandTactics.com and our social media outlets. Stay tuned for more coverage. Thanks for watching.